Hello, this is Kevin Lausch with the Unitarian Universalists of Transylvania County, and I'm here again for the Chalice Children's Book Reading. And today, for Sunday, November the 1, we have the book Equality's Call. Equality's Call, the story of voting rights in America. And this is a really wonderful picture book that charts the growth of voting rights in America from the founding of the country to present day. And I think it's just really good, really apropos for the time. So let's get into it. Equality's Call, written by Deborah Dyson and illustrated by Magdalena Mora. Equality's Call. Our founders declared when our country began that consent of the governed was part of the plan. And where we have a classroom where a teacher is teaching about voting rights, being able to vote for your leaders and let yourself be heard. And through this book, we'll hear about things like consent of the governed, which means the people in the country can choose their leaders, and suffrage, which means the right to vote, and things like that. Through voting, elections, and representation, the voice of the people would strengthen our nation. In fact, though, for years, this great founding ideal was extended to some, and for others, not real. And you see, we have what are sometimes called our Founding Fathers, the men who wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And they are thinking about voting rights for really people like them, white men. But others, such as slaves, were left out of the room and were left without the right to vote. But we heard in the distance Equality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted to all. The state set rules about who got to vote. Your gender, your race, and your wealth were of note. So states could set who got to vote and just like they said, your gender, meaning if you were male or female, your race, the color of your skin, or your wealth, if you own land or not, determine who could vote. And here it says could vote, pretty much white male, and could not vote. Included people of color, including Native Americans, and people who were not male, including women. And people who could not vote, of course, too, included those who were enslaved. White men with property went to the polls. The rest of the people were left off the rolls. The dream of democracy wasn't yet true. There were changes to make. There was work still to do. So who gets the right to vote still? Still, just white men. But we heard growing clearer, equality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted to all. And what do you notice is starting to happen? Are more people joining the parade, joining the walk or the protest? For voting rights? Let's watch it through the book and see who joins. The rules about wealth were the first thing to go. As more were enfranchised, their voices could grow. A small group of voices was raising the fact that enslavement was wrong, an unspeakable act. We use the term enfranchisement, meaning being able to vote, and enslavement, meaning people put in slavery. Good people stood up for the truth that they knew. Abolition 
and suffrage were long overdue. Abolition means the end of slavery, and suffrage means gaining the right to vote. We heard even louder, equality's call, a right isn't right till it's granted to all. Are more people joining the march, or the parade, or the walk for their rights? I think so. There was war in our nation, and slavery ended. Amendments were added, the franchise extended. Who do you think that is? Maybe Abraham Lincoln? Now more men could vote, at least so the law said, yet denial through taxes and tests were widespread. And the voice of women were mostly omitted, and in only some states was their voting permitted. And this is an important page to look at. This box says vote here, but surrounded all around it were voting tests. And many states, particularly states in the South, had voting tests or literacy tests or other ways to try and deny people the right to vote by basically making it so confusing that they could not get the right to vote. And here, a lot of these um, signs say votes for women, what will you do for women's suffrage? And this is a person who, a woman who is marching to vote. And you see right here, a man and a police officer have her by the arms and are arresting her because women weren't allowed the right to vote yet. But nothing could muffle equality's call. A right isn't right till it's granted for all. I think the people working for the right to vote is growing and getting bigger and bigger. They're adding signs such as, give us the vote now. Suffragists didn't give up on the fight and the 19th Amendment gave the women right. But voters of color still met with oppression. Their voting was hindered by brutal suppression. So suffragists were women who were working for the right to vote. And when women gained the right to vote with the 19th Amendment, still people of color were kept from voting. And they met with suppression, meaning People tried to stop them from voting or for trying to register to vote, and sometimes it was quite violent. Often it was quite violent and very mean. So we passed legislation to make voting fair, to extend and protect voters' rights everywhere. And this is a timeline of voting rights. 1924, the Indian Citizenship Act is passed. 1964, the Civil Rights Act is passed. 1965, Selma to Montgomery March, Voting Rights Act is passed. 1970, first extension of the Voting Rights Act. We heard it, we felt it, equality's call, a right isn't right, till it's granted for all. What do you notice now? Even more people of all types, of all colors, all shapes, and all sizes are working together for equal rights. 
The journey's not over. The work hasn't ended. Democracy's dream must be constantly tended. But where we are now is a debt that we owe to the work of more people than we'll ever know. And now we're back in the classroom. What are those kids doing? Maybe they're designing signs to help people to vote. Maybe they're saying, vote, vote now, let us vote. Each time we vote, we acknowledge that past. We honor our rights to ensure they will last. For a vote is an answer, equality's call. And each time that we vote, the march is growing more and more and more. And each time we vote, we vote with them all. And it grows, and it grows, and it grows. Civil rights, voting rights for all. And then in the back, they have a list of voting-related amendments and legislation, which is really neat for parents and kids to read about together, including some of the amendments about ways that voting rights and civil rights were not allowed to people, and how new, um, new amendments and new legislation, new laws came to be, and also voting rights activists, and they're given from 1860 all the way to present day, which is a really neat thing to see. So this is a great book, Equality's Call, the Story of Voting Rights in America. I highly suggest it. All right, that's a Chalice Children's Moment. And now Reverend Bob will be here with you at, by 10 a.m. for a talk about election and voting. And so stay tuned for the worship service. Thank you.